I learned a lot from the two sessions that I attended this afternoon. First one was in this room, the workshop. I was writing some notes about the challenges facing the Muslim community in the West and the East. The second one was trying to find the definition for Allah. Who is Allah? Do you believe in Him or not? So I was listening nearly for two hours from you because you are teachers. You are not chicken. You are not shades. You are beings and not only beings, we are human beings and custodians of the universe and the humanity. You don't accept this, walk out. Don't listen to me. If you accept that you are the custodian of the universe, you from Bangladesh, that's right? Cheta Gomor Cox Bazaar. Or Silat. Silat. Silat So if you are not going to stand up, if you are not going to stand up as a custodian of the universe, you are dead meat for me. You have nothing. But this is not the teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi You got it? Brothers and sisters, here's the challenge. We have seen what happened yesterday in New Zealand. And it's another challenge. And I have a long presentation, but I changed my presentation. I always do that. That's why I can put the light on. To have more brightness. But you can take the presentation for you. What happened in New Zealand is a challenge and responsibility. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to be feeling very upset. Because whoever shot dead in this mosque or two mosques is, or they are all of them, in heaven, inshallah. So pray for the family, to go the family, but we are not going to live the status of sorrow. No. We are going to ask you to do something, and this responsibility on you and on myself, to find a definition, universal definition, of extremism, radicalism, terrorism. We are up till now fighting a mirage. We don't know. We don't know. What is the definition of terrorism? Even the United Nations did not agree on the definition. European Union did not agree on the definition. We do not know the definition of extremism. We do not know the definition of radicalism. It's you being responsible for fighting back to put the definition and stop any alien and any extremist or radicalist or ra racist or, or terrorist from any different background, from any background, to come and actually take the life of others. This is the first response. But today I'm not going to talk a talk because we are going to walk the walk. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't sing, you will sing. That's <laughs> another challenge. Yes? Sinker or thinker? Which one is S or T? You like T or drink thing? Okay. Coming back. What do I mean by responsibility? You come and tell me. Come in, come in, come in. On a Sunday. I'm not joking. Spot on. You tell me what do you mean by responsibility? It's the title of my talk. Tell them or tell me. Whether that's in your community, your family, etc. Justice, and make sure that you are standing to those rights and those responsibilities. Very good, very good. You accept it? Yes. Okay. Any brother can tell me what do you mean by responsibility? Somebody is hiding. I who is the one that told them to come and speak? <laughs> come here, come here. <laughs> Any, <laughs> Thank you. 
at, at night to stand up, to forgive us, to stand up, to give us, to stand up, to listen to us. And He does not need us. And this is your personal responsibility between you and Allah. When somebody comes to you at the last time of the day before Fajr and you turn your back to him because they have been on the computer chit-chatting or on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on Instagram, huh? or cracking jokes or whatever you call it and you become tired. Oh my God, I have back ache, headache, migraine, whatever it is. Leave Allah alone. He's forgiven. Does work this way. If you are not responsible for yourself, you will never be able to become responsible to a community or to a family or to a neighborhood. And the first step is at your bedroom. When none of you, none of us can see you what you are doing there. Nobody can see us. Only the only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the slaves of Allah who are with us in the bedroom. Angels who are writing the wrong and the goods that we are doing every day. This is the first step of responsibility. Don't come and lecture me about responsibility. It's a personal relationship between you and yourself and between you and Allah, then between you and others. You got the first step of responsibility? If I am head, I have to help. If I am saved, I have to save. If I am elevated, I have to elevate others. This is responsibility. If I am taught, I have to teach. And this is responsibility. I don't take the knowledge for myself, no. The knowledge is given to me to pass it. The support given to me to pass it to others. This is responsibility. This is responsibility. And this is responsibility. We do not belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. And He created us to save humanity. Not only to save the neighborhood. <coughs> إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال وأشفقنا منها وين نحن وأشفقنا منها عملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جوالا We have given this kind of responsibility a man mountain skies knew the enormity of the size and the weight of such a responsibility they said no Allah we don't want to carry it but the ignorant the ignorant creation of Allah, the Zalim to himself and herself, took it. Yes, I want to become the president. I want to become the queen. I want to become the king. I want to become the minister. I don't know what kind of responsibility behind it. You know when you become a minister in any country, you will be responsible for any individual who is in the custodianship of the ministry. If you 10 million, if you 5 million, if you 6 million, if you whatever it is. You know when you become the king or the queen or the president, you will be responsible for every being in your kingdom, every being in your republic, every being in your country. Being, not only Muslim, not only uh, a human being, being, animal, birds, habitat, plants, water, mountain, you are responsible for it. That's why Azad Umar radiallahu said, if the uh, mule, mule will be falling, I'll be responsible for it. His great grandson, was responsible to feed the birds from the mountain. Because with his justice, everybody was satisfied. With no poverty. With the second Umar, Umar ibn Abd Aziz, in the Umayyad dynasty. But he said, okay, let us in my period 
of time to say that no bird was hungry. This is the responsibility. The responsibility is not a star on our shoulder. It's not an, a, 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 a rhyme, or what do you call it? Hymn, or poetry, or you are king. Ah, all those people are hypocrites. Once you leave the kingship or the presidency, nobody will knock your door. The only one who will knock your door every night is Allah, who does not need you, but we need him. This is the responsibility between me and him to make me elevate, to so be able to elevate the others. Inspired to inspire. Motivated to motivate. You motivate me with an excellent speech. I have to take this kind of positive energy to give it to others. Keep giving the positive energy to others. At the time of Islamophobia and this ills of society. And you have to be very proud of your deen. Very proud of the Prophet وسلم, the teacher of humanity and the Imam of all the Prophets of Allah. No doubt. No blame. No matter what. You think because what happened in New Zealand Everybody will be, oh, oh, no way, no way. Look at the history. Brother was talking about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He stood against the tyrant when he was He was a young man. He was trying to find God in the creation of God. Moon, sun, night, day. Then he found God. In his heart. After searching, was younger than any one of us in this room. The young boy of Surat Buruj, he was Ghulam, not Fata. Ghulam is less than 15. Fata is above 15. He was Ghulam. And he stood against the king who claimed that he is a god, he was a god. And the king failed to kill him three times. You know what he did? He did not run away to save his life. No, because he was responsible for humanity at the age of 14 or 15. And he stood like a rock in front of the king and telling him, you cannot kill me unless you do what I tell you. He was demanding. The king, the way he was going to be killed. He took a spear and arrow, the arrow, and tie me around the tree. And when you throw it at me, say, Bismi Rabbil Ghanim, with the name of the Lord of the young man. Here, you can only kill me and get rid of me. The king was stupid. He didn't want to get rid of him. He did not understand the enormity <coughs> of the message of the young Young, young boy at the age of 14 or 15 or 16 at that time. When he did what the young boy told him to do, everybody in the village became Muslim. We believe this was the responsibility of the young man or the young boy to let Allah to mention his story in the Quran in the whole chapter. Then all the village will burn. He was trying to save humanity. And this is the responsibility. The more you have believed in Allah, huh? the more Allah will give you the ability to be responsible for a bigger community. It's a relationship between your heart and your community, between your heart and Allah, between your heart and yourself, between your heart and the angels who are trying to protect you wherever you go. This is responsibility. Responsibility is only take a degree. 
Was first that what you call the first excellent what you call this one first class. First class. It's good. Not good enough. Because after the degree, there's another degree. And after the another degree, there's another degree. There's the knowledge, there's discovery, there's pioneering, there's patents. All this is you are responsible to save humanity as we agreed earlier. You are not here as a joker. You are not here just as something. Uh, uh, what's... Salah was talking about divorce. It's a shame on us. It's an absolute shame that the rate of divorce goes up from under 10% to 45%. It's a shame. This means our iman is weak. Whether boys or girls, I have the money, I don't need a husband. I have the money, I don't need a, uh, 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 a wife. Sorry, get lost. <laughs> the most important unit which can save humanity is family. Who is going to bring the second generation and the third generation and the fourth generation and, and, and? You tell me. That my father was ignorant because he did not speak English. My mother was ignorant because she did not speak English. He was a laborer or a taxi driver or whatever you call it. But he managed to bring to the generation that you are a part of it. But we are the people who speak the language, who have the knowledge, are so weak and miserable. Can stand the pressure of the responsibility of bringing a family. If we fail to bring a family, if we fail to make a family, we, uh, that means that our iman, is ex our iman is extremely weak and we are vulnerable. Vulnerable. I mean vulnerable. The family relationship between a husband and wife is burden of both of them. It's not chemistry. I like this girl because, or I like this boy because, so what? So what? We want to build a family? Yes. You want to marry to build a family? See, I have five children. And I have a wife. My wife was responsible for the family. And she, was, she stood like a rock. How many children? How many brothers? Nine? Seven? Huh? Bismillah, mashallah. And his mother stood like a rock. Behind the husband, and so on. Now you tell me, oh my God, oh, if I'm going to get married, I must get only one young child. Oh, what a headache. <laughs> <laughs> See, the weaknesses, the weaknesses of what they call themselves, the educated, and the strength of the uneducated. The balance is different. The scale of balance is different. The taxi driver and the laborer knew how to build community. But the PhD graduate and the master graduate do not know how to take responsibility to build the community. They can talk nicely. They have the is they have the BBC or the titles. You title me, I title you. I can give you any title you want. Any title you want. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. What it means for you when you leave your legacy behind. A part of your legacy, the generation you go to build at home. And the generation you go to build around the community that you are serving. This is responsible. This is responsibility. This is responsibility. What do you mean by positive magnetic power? Do you have any one of them who can answer the other? The other, the other? If you don't stand up, I will ask you to come here and you cannot say no. Especially from the brother, because the brother are more shy than the sister. Okay? Ah, I can see each brother writing his name, his, his head. But I'm looking at the sister to give the brother a chance. Isn't it a shame that the brother in this room is half the number of the sister in this room? You have to give them a wake-up call of the 
arrogancy. Deny it all. Why should I come? What is this? And this lack of knowledge. Thank you for coming. But I want you to be as twice as the girls. But the girls are ahead of you. Compete. Yes. Uh, do we have a positive magnetic power? What does it mean? A challenge. I say something in English which could be meaningless. But you have to answer me. You start. And you know the answer. No. You come here and you say the answer because I, I believe that you know the answer. Come here, come here. Oh, it's finished. See? No hesitation. No. And if I ask my brother now to come and do it, and he does not come, I will, I will, I will throw somebody from the window. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Just say anything. Do, I, do we have a positive magnetic power and what does it mean? If you are going to be a community leader, you have to stand under the spotlight and feel the heat, carry the burden, have the headache and the back ache, and here we go. This is the community. Positive magnetic power. I'm not here. Say yes or no. <laughs> yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> okay, he's starting. Don't go, don't go. Brother, come on, volunteer. Come on, brother. <laughs> Okay? So you are the flow creator. 
or maker or the change maker. That's why your magnetism is coming from your heart. And the most difficult struggle and challenge and jihad is when you tell Allah, please Allah, sit it in my heart. Please Allah, come, my heart is open, but my heart is not clean enough to make Allah to come by himself because I have dunya in my heart. So you will not have the same magnetism like somebody like, what's your name? Asya. Asya. Oh, Asya, the wife of Pharaoh. <laughs> what did he do to you? <laughs> Let me tell you what our Asya Mr. Muzahim did. And this is the history of the woman in Islam. Two great women at that time stood, stood like rocks against the Egyptian Pharaoh. One of them was the one who used to comb the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. And when she was combing her hair, the comb fell down and she said something, Oh God! The girl told her, Do you mean my father? She said, no, 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 your father is not my God. Said, Who is your God? Your God is the one who is the God of your father. She told her that. Said, Are you aware of this? Consequences? She said, yes, I know. Yes, I know. And she was the wife of the Mu'min Ali Fir'aun. In the family of Pharaoh, there was a Mu'min. Mentioned many times in the Quran. And she was his wife. And she went to tell her, her, her father. Okay? Uh, which is Pharaoh. He said, what do you mean? I'm not your Lord. He said, you are not my Lord. My Lord is the Lord who created you and me. A woman like a rock. Responsibility is iman, is belief. She fear no fear. She, she did not fear no fear. I said, I'm going to boil the oil and throw the five kids of yours one by one. If you don't say that I am your Lord, say, do whatever you want. A mother of five seeing her kids one by one thrown into the boiling oil. And this did not, this did not move her an inch to lower her belief. Seeing the grandchildren. And when it came to number five, was a small little, little baby, they were my mother. Well, let him speak. Don't be afraid. The fire of dunya is less than the fire of the life to come. Don't be afraid, my mother. You are my mother? <laughs> Stand up, don't move. <laughs> you know what she asked the film? And you thought that she wanted a favor to save her? She said, yes, what do you want? She said, when I die, please collect my bones and the bones of my children in one graveyard. That's why when Muhammad Sallallahu went to the Islam and Mi'raj, Okay? He smelled a very nice smell in heaven. And he told Hadra Jibreel, said, what is this beautiful smell? Very, very beautiful. He said, this is the smell of the graveyard of this young woman who was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. Okay? Now coming to Asya, which is yourself. Asya was a believer in Moses, alayhi salam. And there was a wife of Pharaoh, and was foster mother of Moses, of Moses, what do you call it? Step of foster. Yeah, yeah, something like this. And she said, how dare you do it to this woman? I said, what do you mean? Are you believing in Moses? She said, of course I believe in Moses. Of course I believe in him. I said, come back to my lordship. She said, no, this is you. <laughs> no way. No way! So he has to bring her mother and the family. And, and this is the role of woman in Islam. This is the role of woman in Islam. And her mother came, she did not. Then he put her in the middle of the, uh, of the heat, in the middle of the desert in Cairo. And he nailed her arms and her legs 
into the middle of the desert. And he told her, he told her, your name has to reflect the quality of the belief in the heart of Asia, the wife of Pharaoh. Stand up for her. Not for me. Look at them. She's asking. <laughs> and he told her, I'm going to build a very heavy rock and throw it on you to smash you. Why am I saying this? She told her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi, it needed a... Uh, ابن لي ابن لي عندك قصر في الجنة ها بيت بيت الجنة وانا جيني من فرعون ومرأة او الله بنت فور مي ا هاوس ان باس اند سيف مي فروم فيرو اند ذا بيبل اوف فيرو الله انستنتلي ليت هير تو سي ذا بيوتيفول هاوس اوف هير اند شو سمايلينج اند لافينج اند هابي اي نو وات فيرو سيد He said, I told you that she's a mad woman. I'm torturing her and she's smiling and laughing. She's smiling and laughing because she saw her place in heaven. As it's you. Stand up for her. Okay. And before he threw the rock on her, she died. So she did not feel the pain. This is you as a woman in Islam. Whether the young woman was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh or the wife of Pharaoh himself. And this is your name. Yes? That's why, thank you. Both of you. You know, this was the responsibility of Asia. And this was the responsibility of the young, the other woman who was combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. And this was the responsibility of the believer of the people of Pharaoh, Mu'min al Fraud. When you look at this, responsibility is Iman. It's Iman. It's Iman. Whether this Iman because you are Muslims or non Muslims. How the followers of Jesus, peace be upon them, been tortured and thrown into the lines. Uh, to be eaten by them in the middle of Rome. Eaten by lions. Men, women, and children. But where is Christianity now? Where is the teaching of Jesus from them? They stood like rock huh? to save the teaching of Jesus. Peace be upon. This is what we can't say. But what do we mean by responsibility? Responsibility is a never ending story. Never ending story. Never ending story. It's from birth to the resurrection before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's non-stop. Non-stop delivery of action. Positive magnetism. The power of a man led people to be glued to you and following you and you create the flow for them. Okay? On my time. More. You've got 10 minutes and 10 minutes for questions. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> we talked about you. Uh, can anyone come and tell me what are the different types of responsibility? <laughs> yes? No, no, no. Somebody else. <laughs> Somebody else. I know that you are. Oh. <laughs> they have been inspired, they are inspiring you. I'll, I'll count one to three. Nobody else from the boys raise his hand up. I'll, I'll go to you. <laughs> one, two, no, for other kids. No, 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 no. You. The one who would like to get the honor is the one who will walk it here. Wow. You know the wow? There's wow and there's why. One, yeah, go on. You've been prepared. Ah, I'm going to choose one of you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
go from the back. Yes, come on. You know, Bangladesh is wedding. We don't bang out. Bangladesh is the man. Spreading peace 
and love to everybody and be the humanity server. This is what is my advice. Difficult, but this is responsibility, and this responsibility is Iman. Okay, this is the first question from this side. Question from this side. Yes, sister, have a question? Okay. Any question from sisters? Speak up! <coughs> yes, one come back to you. Trying to be the change maker can sometimes yeah. be very difficult. <coughs> so trying to be a change maker can sometimes be very difficult. And it takes a lot to push yourself past that difficulty and actually continue striving and not giving up. So my question to you is, what have been your biggest motivators? And so for you in your journey that you've been through, what have been the things that have been motivated you? And following on from that question, practically, what is it that we can do to maximize the situation we're, we're in and the skills that we have? What is the, 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 the most motivator or the, the biggest motivator? Yeah. It is when I am with the people who are employing me. In Africa, the orphans, the widows, and the displaced, these are the bigger, biggest motivator for me. When I used to have a rusty heart in Birmingham or in London, sitting doing nothing apart from doing something on the computer, bored, I go to clean my heart in these areas. This number one motivator. Number two, have a good relationship between you and the Book of Allah. Because you know what, sister? When you read, he is listening to you. He said, oh, beautiful. He loves you. Because he is this, said, this is an intimate relationship between you and Allah. You can imagine that you are reciting a song, of which is the best singer uh, people know now in UK or globally. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Impressive. Impressive. 
Somebody actually had in the deep water, and you are the one who take hair from the deep water. This cleans your heart and strengthen your back and deepen your iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why a Prophet said, Al Muslim, Alladi Yahalit in Nas, Wasbur Allah Adam, Laysa Kaladi Lay Khalit in Nas, Wasbur Allah. The Muslims who mix with people and be patient to their hearts is not like the one who does not mix and not does become patient on their hearts. You be one of them. Be one of them. And this, if you become one of them, you will become the change maker. You'll be, able to, you'll, be, you'll be able to have the power of creating the flow which led the community to follow your flow. Do you think 30 years ago or 35 or 40 years ago, I have this? No. I was a nut. N-U-T. <laughs> you know N-U-T? When you go to Turkey, there's a lot of nuts there. Pistachio, cashew, 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 even peanuts. <laughs> See, when you become, when, when I, I was a nut, as I said, yeah? I was never was, I never was a good student in the medical school. Never, 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 never. <laughs> Anybody in medical school? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have sex with you together? <laughs> I have sex with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> she is thinking that I'm a joke. <laughs> you come here, it's an order. <laughs> you see, when I was in the medical school like herself, huh? when I was in medical school like herself, okay, I never got the excellent degree. Sometimes I get fail or fail. <laughs> Both of them goes very well with me. Okay? So it doesn't make any difference. When I came here 42 years ago, I came just for a degree. But Allah prepared something better for me. Which is what I'm doing nowadays with the charity work and the humanitarian work. I never realized that my MED, which I took from Birmingham University Medical School, was a token of appreciation of Allah from what we have been doing with Islamic Caliph and other organizations. So the degree became a token of appreciation. But the mission was the humanitarian work and the social work. So, 35, 40 years ago, I did not know who, who I'm going to be. Now you think, oh, he's a, she is a legend. Oh, she must be born like this. Me, her father, her mother, and all this. No, we are normal people like yourself. Do mistakes, fail, then we'll succeed. You create the flow, people will follow you. What is selfie? It has to be here. Well, come on, come on, selfie here. She will selfie you and will selfie her. This is for uh, for the for the for the for BBC. <laughs> Challenges and 
you, you go through the procedures, but what do you do then? Because it, it, it does tie you up, and you do kind of lose hope, and you don't want to give up. And obviously, silence means complacence, and it gives people more courage to continue doing what is wrong and not to check themselves. So, how does one kind of address that? Thank you. Very good question. It is a part of governance, transparency, and maturity. And being able to understand the generation gap. Most of the organization, if you call if you put mosques on one side, then other organizations on the other side, the mosque should be more mature because they are older than actually the other organization. But a lot of problems is happening because of the governments. Sometimes we do not invest much in building a strong system in our organization. And we will take it for granted. Okay? Nowadays, it's a challenge, not only for one organization, but for all Muslim organizations, to mature and to accept the new challenge of the younger generation. If we do not bring the younger generation to the organization, our organization will be dead in a few years, no matter how strong it was before. I always give an example of an organization which I came without mentioning its name. It was the top in the 60s and 70s. But the chairman insisted to be there till the year 2000. And instead of becoming the top in 2000 or 2005, it became the smallest organization after that. It will not let go. Those kind of management systems will, no, will do no good to the organization, no good to the community. Another thing is because we came sometimes with our political problem and social problem, we still are affected by it in the first generation. Second and third generation like you and Abdullah and others need to make the change. The change has to come from within or from organization you build yourself. You have the two challenges. Either you go inside and start to build and struggle and be patient to change the existing organization. Okay? Or you build new organization which can understand better the community that we are living in. Why people come time, sometimes come and tell me there are more fair, fair systems in uh, non-Muslim organizations than the Muslim organization? Because they have built a structure organization with policy, procedures, law, and norms, and, and everything, whether you are X or Y or Z. We, to be very honest, we are in the first 30 or 50 or 40 or 50 years of building up our organization. We are struggling with a lot of challenges internally, but a lot of young people like you do not want to go to work in Muslim charities. Why? Because they don't pay. Because the, the income is not as good as when you go and work in, in the industry or in the business outside. That's why the, the talented people amongst you don't want to touch us. With Islamophobia and others, you will never come to a Muslim charity, whether it's a mosque or community center or a charity organization. Because this is my career. Okay? That's one, one challenge. Human resources. The good human resources like, like you said do not want to work in this organization. Plus, we need to let them to become mature. Now, you know, sister, uh, how do you know, sorry, this is not okay. In 1991, when Iran earthquake came, a lot of people are saying, shall we help the Shia or not? Islamic belief were outside, raising quarter of a million pounds, and make a deal with the Iranian Red Crescent this 20, 28 years ago. This was a vision of organization, and it was actually lack of maturity of others. When Haiti earthquake came, more than 20 Muslim charities spent millions and millions of pounds on Haiti. But took how, took how many? Took about 20 years to get people to understand that you have to respond not only to the Muslim uh, 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 Muslim
Muslim problems, but to any problems. Haiti, Nepal, Philippines, and, 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 and. We started with only Muslim problems. Now we are maturing. The mosques are opening their doors to everyone now. Okay. Building community. Changing the mindset of community leaders and generation takes time. Takes time. It's not a luck. It's a culture. It's a mindset. It's philosophy of thinking. It, uh, Taliban. Talk about the case of Taliban. We have been discussing this 2002 with the, with the, with the, with the minister of David at that time. That you cannot win in this area by just building some buildings. Because Taliban is a culture. It's a culture in a society that you cannot change. Unless your government over the coming 15 years will bring soft imam to change the mindset and the philosophy of thinking of the young generation. So in 15, 20 years you have a different culture of the society. Now they spend trillions of pounds of dollars. Trillions. Not, not, not billions, trillions. But they came back to our advice. She gave it to them 17 or 18 years ago. Nobody can change culture by force. Culture changed by culture. <coughs> philosophy of thinking changed by philosophy of thinking. Values changed by values. This is actually the coexistence or the struggle between the values, the philosophy of thinking, and the culture. And this takes time. And you have to respect our elders. Sometimes we go to the mosque or to the organization and we boom, because we are young, we are powerful, we are very fast. Boom, boom. You know this one? And this scares somebody who does not speak English probably. Don't have any qualification. And as I told you earlier on, we have difficulty when we have young people like you strong. Not anyone will be able to manage strong individuals like yourself. But on your side, take me by the hand. Take me by the hand when you, when you dream. See me, in, see me in your dream. <laughs> because she was dreaming now about the future. <laughs> okay. Take the elderly by the hand. Make him or her like your mother or your father. Exactly like a Hassan al Hussein was watching somebody making wrong wudu. The story. And instead of coming to this old man, telling him, you, you, uh, 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 and they are the, the, the grandsons of the Prophet They were telling one another, Hassan, can you teach me how I can make wudu? And when the man was looking at both of them, demonstrating how they make wudu, he said, oh my God, I was doing the wudu wrong. I want you to be like Hassan and Hussein, and take some ignorant one like myself by the hand. Yes? I'm wrong. But correct me. I'm ignorant. Teach me. Okay? Thank you.